Hey there, folks. Um, my name is Michael Rode, uh, and this is the second video I'm making to try to be uh, useful to folks making a shift from in-person uh, arts and education work, either in theater or other disciplines. Um, and this time I'm joined by my dear friend and colleague, Jessica Thebus, who is um, an amazing theater creator and director. She's based in Chicago. She runs the MFA directing program at Northwestern University. Uh, I'm lucky to call her a friend. We worked together there for a while. And Jessica's um, body of work as a maker and a director and an educator really has a lot to do with new and novel ways of getting at story. Uh, and we thought it might be great. Um, and I asked Jessica to sort of have a conversation where she might share some of that thinking and some activities and maybe ways of uh, exploring the notion of story that could be useful in the online work you are now doing. So I'm gonna ask her a little bit about her work, but really we're just gonna spend time with her offering prompts and some exercises that you could perhaps adapt for your own uses, whatever kind of work you're doing around notions of story, events, performance, education, that's what we're gonna try to share um, in a brief amount of time here. So first, Jessica, um, thanks so much. Oh, my pleasure. I'm so excited to talk with you and so excited to share knowledge with our worldwide community. Yeah, um, thanks for that. I'm going to start by asking you just to maybe talk about when I said before you have been exploring and thinking about story in a lot of different ways, how does your teaching sort of investigate story from these different ways and what might you share from that? I tend to create classes that use different ways of looking at things. So one, for example, would be a miniature puppetry class, a toy theater class. One would be an adaptation Wait, are, are class. Are those two things the same thing? A miniature puppetry class and toy yes. theater? Yes. Toy theater is, and if you Google it, you'll find all kinds of amazing images. Toy theater is, was a miniature puppetry form in the Victorian age. We've all seen them, a tabletop theater with a little proscenium arch and a miniature play. And so it's miniature puppetry that comes under the umbrella term of toy theater. And it's a great way to look at story, even though the students might not want to be training as puppeteers. So, so I also... I just want to ask, so right now I'm looking yeah. at you in a box and right now yes. we're all connecting and working with each other around the world pretty much yes. by seeing each other through boxes. So am I understanding that the box that I'm viewing you in could actually become a, a stage for like an object theater performance? Exactly right. And that kind of makes it perfect for our current situation. Well, what, how, um, how might you like invite somebody to think about that? Well, starting with toy theater, what I would say is the reason that I teach that class to directors is because in the world of making a tabletop puppet show where you're using objects and you can be using objects you're creating out of paper or out of cardboard, you can also be using objects that you're finding um, in your home, it can be found pencils, spoons, cups. So found you material wide... at this yeah. moment could actually be your material for making performance. Yes, you have okay. a wide variety of options. I teach this class live. I don't teach it online usually, but it is a perfect adaptation for the situation that we as theater artists are in now. Because Michael, as you just said, it is this little frame. We have this little proscenium frame. So what can we do it? One of my mentors just said, never waste a good crisis. And I think that's so true for us. Not only can we observe you know, how everyone's responding worldwide in this situation, but we can really look at our tools and see what they can do. So story, let's stay with Macbeth because I think that's a, a helpful, familiar text and toy theater, miniature puppetry. So students can do some research about toy theater. They'll find some amazing things. They can share images. They can look at the work of contemporary artists of which there's a lot, um, really varied. 
and then they can make their own pieces. What's the, so, like, what's a, yeah, I bet you're about to get to it, but like, what's a first assignment you would give someone who'd never done it before in this instance? Well, the first assignment would be just to think about it, actually. Like, you've done this research and that's been fun. Now think about Macbeth. And you think, okay, say you have 10 minutes. You're not doing the whole play. You're not using all of Shakespeare's words. Say you only are doing it in images. You Maybe you ha can have 10 lines of text or 10 words of text and five images. And you ask them to tell the story of Macbeth or any play of your choice. I'm just using Macbeth as an example because here's the great thing about the miniature puppetry, and this is why I teach it even when we're not in this situation, is that you need to really know your story. You need to know who those characters are for you. In order to know like the entrance of the main character, the entrance of Macbeth, the entrance of Lady Macbeth, what do those witches look like? And in the miniature tabletop form, you aren't even bound by the laws of physics right? Things can explode. Things can be lit on fire. All kinds of things you can't do in the real theater, in the big theater, you know? Things, characters, the character of the sword can enter, can be its own, perhaps a cardboard sword created by an artist, perhaps a real knife, a real blade that enters as a character. Perhaps blood is poured on that blade, there's so many things you can do while not bound by a theater, the bodies of actors that you can't Wait, so chop up. I could have like a castle. Yes. And I could have, and I could have somebody walk on and all of a sudden yes. I've started to tell the story of Macbeth in a way that can live in this square. Exactly right. And what I would give is that first example is 10 lines of ten or less, right? Because sometimes you don't want any text. Sometimes it's better with 10 lines of text and at least or, or less and five images and a proscenium frame, however you want to construct that, and the story of Macbeth taking into account foreground, middle ground, and background. So if you think of the proscenium stage, like the drop in the back would be background, the legs in the middle would be middle ground, right up there at the front, right, would be foreground and maybe three transformations. Something, what do you mean by transformation? Yes, where something transforms into something else. An example might be you have a puppet, and by puppet, I don't just mean a glove puppet. I think a puppet can be any image, a pen, exactly. Um, I have this cup right here. I have, yes, a Rubik's Cube. I have a phone and the phone is a good example because let's say this could be a piece of paper or cardboard and we've got um, your character of Macbeth created here on the front. You've drawn him however you like or you've used a photograph, a Xerox photograph depending on people's access to art supplies or to um, copiers or whatever. But you have this character. This character mm -hmm. has entered. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things you can do, of course, is a close-up on the mm -hmm. eye mm -hmm. of the character. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the maybe it turns around mm -hmm. and you see a bloodshot eye. That would be a transformation, right? Or maybe he enters and he's sort of normal and then he explores the, the background and then you turn him around and turn him like this. And on the other side, you three, see the three witches. That would be a transformation. But, um, so let, let me ask something for a moment. So, so, so far the example that we're using is, think about the, the box of the screen as your sort of performance space, a frame, using yes. Macbeth as an example, tell the story using objects, thinking about them as puppets or characters, creating different kinds of backgrounds. And then you were suggesting the assignment of a certain number of images, which can be still or moving, a certain yeah. number of lines of text. And am I right that also, in addition to using Macbeth or any play, you could invite students to um, take an article from the newspaper that day and create a, an object theater version of that. You could even say, hey, how's your family dealing with the current moment in the world? And like use object theater as a way to sort of share um, 
how your family's feeling or how you've been feeling for the last couple of days. Absolutely. It, the assignment could also be a dream you've had. Yeah. It could be a, a memory from yeah. childhood. It could be a poem yeah. that you love. Um, it could be, I mean, there, there are just many ways to frame it. Uh, I use plays, but I also use poems. But the thing it does for artists is it forces you to make decisions, which are incredibly important. What does Macbeth look like? If you have a puppet of violence, what, that puppet can be anything, doesn't mm. need to be a person. It could be a piece of black silk. It could be mm. a piece of red silk. Mm. It could be, again, a knife. It could be a sponge, which is soaked in red liquid, which is mm. squeezed. You know, you, you have to, as a theater maker, really determine what is the entrance of this character need mm. to feel like? Mm. What is the death of this character need to feel like? Mm. And this is story right? What are the interaction between those two characters need to feel like? If you don't have any text and you've got Macbeth here, we don't know what he is, and Lady Macbeth here, and you have about, you know, 10 seconds for them to interact, mm. what happens? Mm. And then, of course, that's a great thing to show to people and then for people to respond, well, what I got. You're also offering a process by which the rest of the class watching can have a really valuable conversation about how they are reading each other's work and practice feedback and hone their own responsiveness to things that aren't a literal or straight realistic. Correct. Because the great opportunity is it can't be literal and straight realistic. Right. It just right. can't. That's right. just not. So you have to focus on story, yeah. not just on plot. And we've all seen this. Sometimes we've seen plays that are like, well, I saw the plot, but yeah. I didn't really get the story. You, and so as you watch it, people to get feedback like, here's the story I saw, yeah. or here's the moment. Yep. Here's the event that was super exciting to me. When his eye, we close up on his eye, and then it turned into the bloodshot eye all of a yeah. sudden. While the, and you could maybe do a sound like, yeah. right, close up of his eye as you hear some drumming. Maybe it's live, maybe it's computer generated. And then it turns into the bloodshot eye, you know, and you have, you get your response. People being like, when that happened, that's terrifying. And that makes me feel like I'm seeing the inside of him, the part of him that is driven by this obsession with power. What, what I... Um, what I appreciate about what you're offering, and I think we're gonna wrap in a second for our timing, but like yes. what I appreciate is you're offering us a way to think about story. And because it's, you know, in this um, technology mediated way, it's kind of technological, but it's super basic. It's just yes. super basic. Any objects around me focus on story. Any objects around me focus on making a spectacular moment. And I think that's a great thing to give students access to when they don't have physical space, bodies, lights, tech, you know, how can you use this to make the yes. spectacular and to make emotional yes. impact? And what I would just emphasize is as a teacher, yeah. you can really set these boundaries. I want you to make a two minute piece using only objects found in a kitchen yeah. and only your hands. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to base it on a poem you love. Yeah. I want you to make a three Great. minute piece based on a Shakespeare play when you cut, make, or have all the characters be old photographs. Oh, it's great. I want you to make, you know, a four minute piece, which is based on a classic fairy tale or myth, yeah. where you're only using like black pen and cardboard, and there has to be a song in it. That's great. Um, I'm, I'm gonna know. pause you there, I'm gonna pause yeah. you there. Uh, that is awesome. I feel like there's such good, useful, specific stuff folks can take on. And I, I uh, obviously you and I could do this for hours and we'll do it <laughs> again. But, but I do want to say um, thank you. I really appreciate your making a little time. Uh, I want to say to folks, if you watch this, Google Jessica Phoebus um, and learn more about her work. Um, I'm going to put up my email again, like I did last time. So you can write me and I can forward stuff on to Jess and let us know if this stuff is helpful. So I'm at Michael Road, Michael dot Road, R-O-H-D at gmail.com. And I'll forward it on to Jessica. 
Um, and, you know, keep working on content if you all find this useful. Jessica, thank you and stay healthy. I'm going to stop this recording now. See you later. Bye. Okay.